Crossroads Media. Joel was so damn ruthless out there. He had to chase down block when James Harden thought he had an easy two. And this 7-2 man, this 7-2 gentleman is running down the floor like he's Jason Kelsey. Making big blocks downfield to open up gaps for Miles Sanders. That's exactly what it reminded me of. I had to watch that play on the loop like 10,000 times. The fact that that this seven foot two man is doing this stuff doesn't make any sense and that's why I'm so in awe every time one I watch him and every time two there's morons out there who believe the best thing for this franchise is to get rid of this talent. I was on the Fanatic filling in for the John Kincaid show this week early in the morning and then I had one night sprinkled in of filling in for Devon Givens and I got calls saying this team needs to get rid of them. You'll never win with the center. What are you doing? How dumb can you be? How stupid are you? Where are your brain cells? I just have to do the good old hang up. The hell are you talking about? How do you not see this? It all starts with him. 34 points. He had the step back jumper at the end of the first half, which did go off the glass. But to be fair, we know that he has that in his repertoire. Uh, he was passing it out of pressure. His first quarter was ridiculous. How about the fact, this is my favorite, when he's running the floor and then in rhythm, all in one motion, he collects and gathers the basketball and shoots a smooth J over a defender that's challenging him but they have no shot in hell of actually blocking it or doing any damage defensively because Joel's all what from that spot on the floor? Hitting threes as well? I mean, come on now. Come on now. And I did see this reaction because the last we spoke, we talked about Doc Rivers and Keith Pompey. And I absolutely despised everything that Doc Rivers did in that moment. But the question was fair. Doc, you won a game in Toronto, but as of late, you've been really struggling to put away teams. This was a win. Previously, they were losses. So I get it. A win is a win, and you will win ugly over an 82-game sample size. That's inevitable. But the statement stays true that this team, against squads that were plucking guys off the street, were playing very pathetic. They were not bringing their compete level. They were not prepared and determined to play. And you even said that, Doc. Because in one of your game, post-game pressers, you even stated, we're overlooking our opponent. Well, that's a problem, Doc. And we're trying to figure out why the Sixers are overlooking their opponents. So it's not a ridiculous question to ask, even when you win, because it still can be true that you squeaked away with one and you did find a way to win. Yes, that is the quote that you could throw out there, that standard cliche, they found a way. But they're still not determined from the jump to compete at a high enough level, even with your roster limitations throughout that week and a half. Jimmy butler -less Miami Heat team without Bam as well. The Atlanta Hawks, right? We've been through it before. So, I bring that up to you because it plays a role in how I feel about the outcome of this game. I saw this reaction on Twitter. Oh, I guess it wasn't crazy to just think a win is a win. Oh, I guess now that they won this game, that Toronto game doesn't really mean anything, huh? No, 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 it means something. No, no, there's validity to how we felt prior to this game, and it's the fact that when they are ready to rock, when they are ready to play, when they do head on the court with the right mentality, they're significantly better than what they have recently shown. Because they just banged with the best of them. And they just went out there and put pure heart and passion on the floor. And whether they would have won or lost this game, just the fact that they were hanging in there with such a special team, with special talent, like that tells me, because Doc Rivers doesn't, ma doesn't care about context. It doesn't matter to him. You could play like shit and win the game, and he's got a big smile on his face, and he's moving on to the next one. Where to me, it's about the process of the result. So why did 
did you get the result that you did? Yeah, we won, but we, if we continue to do this, if we continue to play that way, that result won't be there more times than not. If you play the same way you played in Toronto, you lose more than you win. So if they would have lost this game against Brooklyn, but they played a certain way, if you play that way more times than not, you will beat the teams on the other side. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it does matter how it looks. It does matter the context. And it does matter what's happening out there. You can't just pretend the result is the only thing. Because then you're being fooled. You need all the data. You need all the information. And what I witnessed was a team with the proper approach. 